Give me that. Sorry for, Sorry yelling. for yelling. We gotta stay focused. Sorry for yelling. Sorry for yelling, sorry, sorry for, for yelling. yelling, but I got some shit I need to say. Give me that. Sorry for yelling. Sorry for yelling, sorry for yelling. I got some shit that's on my chest today. Sorry for yelling, sorry, sorry for yelling. yelling. Tell these MCs, please get out my way. Give me that. Sorry for yelling. Sorry for yelling, sorry for yelling. Sorry for yelling. Give me that. Sorry for yelling. I'm sorry. I had to take a levity break. All of this talking. Sorry for yelling. That was done with the whole Akai setup, but I'm closing reason now. I'm gonna close reason again. I don't wanna say this. This is just for the tutorial. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Alexander Howard of the Audio Guild, and this is episode four of Dar Wars. Um, for this particular one, we are going to dive into Sonar Platinum, Sonar Platinum and Reason are dear to me because those are the workstations that I started with. I uh, went to school for audio engineering, Columbia College, Chicago. Anyway, they were Pro Tools entrenched. So as a person that's a student, we didn't have Pro Tools money. So Reason and Sonar in particular offered me a, a way to understand the theory that I was learning in school and then apply it to a DAW. And in fact, the theory that I got in school was mostly hardware and analog theory, but it transcribed over well with Sonar. That's what I'm getting at. Okay, so I've opened up Sonar and I'm going to go new from template. One of the things is when I set up my template, it allowed me to put images. So I was able to go to the Akai website and use their image. So, and this will be MPC tutorial. One T sucker. All right, so it opens up. Boom. Now, this template is already set to have the plugin open. However, same way. All these dogs got a browser, and in the browser, come on. Uh, hit B for browser. Yeah. So in the browser, I could say plugins, and then I can go to that same folder that I save most of my plugins in and I can call it up. But I've set up a template already so I don't have to do that for this situation. Okay, we'll go back to folders. So, all right, this is the linear screen. I'm gonna close the browser and so I'll hit F and you'll see it's a linear screen so it's a linear multi-track situation. But if I hit D and then Shift D I can get to the mixer. And so I guess that's a good observation. Uh, Ableton only has a session view and an arrangement view. Reason has a sequencer, which is the arrangement view. It has a rack and then it has a mixer. Uh, Ableton's mixer is in its session view. FL Studio has a channel rack, it has a playlist, it has a mixer. Sonar has a mixer and then shift D. It has a 
sequencer, and then shift D, we have B. I did say B, sucker. D, B, B, okay. Shift D, all right. So it has just a sequencer and a mixer, but containing those are other modules. You have the piano roll, you have effects windows, you have a pro channel on the mixer. Here, I'll hit D, Shift D, and then go to one of the mixers. You have a pro channel, so you can do some really decent EQing. And it has an effects bin, sends bin, and that's pretty much it. And as well, it connects to the Behringer control faders. So you see these eight in purple, I traverse down to the next eight. You see, blah, blah, blah. All right. <clears throat> Which and those allow you to control the, the channels. Oh, wow. I just controlled the, the gain stage inside of the, uh, the voice meter which is good too. All right, we're trying to get all of this to be full-fledged. At the end of the day, I don't want to configure any more gear. I just want to produce. I don't, I'm tired of looking at wires. I don't want to go back behind anything anymore. I just dust the stuff off and play. I don't want to do this wire shit no more. This shit is frustrating. It's not frustrating, it's just the end result is I want to produce. So I, I don't want to keep going back to configuring gear. Enough with the dot drive. Okay, so I've opened up Sonar, and if we go to the other window, like I already stated, the plugin is already up. Let's see what song. Um, let's go flip it five. F it. And the only reason I'm using Flip It 5 is because I know that I committed to doing sequences to it. So, all right, sitting over here, I'm going to drag this back over. And I'll hit play. Flip It 5, what do you think? Let's see, song mode, 87. 87. Hit play. You know, I didn't done a lot of talking. And I'm almost willing to bet I haven't set this voice meter thing up. But we gonna see. So we go to P for preferences. Ah, voice meter set up already. Let's go down. Ah, voice meter set up already. But I don't want aux. No, I don't want aux. One, two, three, four. I want the regular. I don't want aux. Okay, free me up. And I want the regular for those. For those, apply. Now, I'm hoping that this recorded like it was supposed to. You see, I'm in that non-responsive mode with sonar now. Mm. We might have to do this video over. I smell a crash, I smell a crash. Okay, I'm sorry about that. We didn't necessarily crash though. It actually had to configure all those channels back over. But it's, it's up and running so much as I can see. And as well, I while I was waiting, I previewed the video and we did have audio. So I'm not editing anything. Oh, raw and uncut. All right, so I'm gonna hit play. But before I hit, yeah, no, I'm gonna hit play. And then we're gonna drag this over to the NPC window.
So, okay. And we got one more synopsis video coming. So as far as Sonar is concerned, it had good MIDI implementation. I didn't, I don't think I showed that. So, okay, no, I'm gonna show a couple of other things first. So, what's that? F, what's that? Ah, oh, whatever. And these tracks down. And these are all coming from the MPC. enable these four tracks and then we'll just hit record four <laughs> Unrecord, enable these tracks, and then control, copy. It's kind of like setting up a series of sequence based off of audio instead of MIDI. Uh, if I hit F, I can shrink the screen, and you can see what I'm talking about. So, hit this, control, and it's sequencing your audio, which... I like the flexibility of producing with MIDI and then busting it to audio, but you get the gist of how the two work together. And this is the second track. All right, so <clears throat> the same situation. There's a master track. That track basically is a MIDI controller for all of this. And I had mine at the bottom. And so with a master track, you could draw a MIDI event. So right click, import, import MIDI. So that's the MIDI track, and you could, like I in indicated earlier, so you could sequence over here as opposed to okay. Yeah, it did get everything. as well sequence over here which is pretty cool so let's 
too. Another thing is, well, I committed to making audio. But if I got rid of this audio or something, I could take this piano roll down and just start deleting audio. That's not audio. That's just the image. The thing is, I can go over to the MPC and say, here, let me pull this over. And I can say, nah, I want to open up something else. So we'll go Godzilla. That was rude. So, in making a tutorial, I'll probably be relegated to this seat. But in a production situation, I'm probably traversing back and forth across the room to the two, three, to the pieces of equipment. My whole point is, if I use my ears more than I have to use a mouse, I feel like I'm being more productive because I can hear things and then instantly affect those things that I hear or get a result as opposed to being stuck in a four bar loop area, knowing that you got enough uh, equipment that you can expand outward and not stay inside the box. So this concludes our presentation of Dar Wars. Um, I hope that you got a substantial amount of information and with that, I would like for you to subscribe. I should have said that the other three videos, but I'd be in the matrix. But subscribe and ask questions so that I can keep making more videos. This is Alexander Howard of the Audio Guild saying peace out.